Okay, without using a graphing calculator, we're going to go ahead and we are going to complete number three. We're going to identify the vertical aspect of the horizontal, if it exists, the intercepts, and we'll use additional points that we calculate in order to um, create the graph. Again, this is no calculator. When I did one and two, I used it just as I um, created additional points. Um, I'm reading over the directions on the answer key, and we can see the directions say that we are not going to use a graphing calculator, so it will not be in your possession for number three. All right, let's take a look at this to see what we're going to do. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. Y equals, I'm going to factor to two, and I'm going to get X plus two. And then the bottom, I'm going to factor out of x, I'm going to get x plus 4. Now let's make sure this works. There's x squared plus 4x and 2x plus 4. Okay, that works. Let's start by identifying, does this have a horizontal asymptote? And we can do that by looking at the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator. Degree refers to the highest exponent on the variable. So this has a degree 1 and this has a degree 2. Whenever the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, we automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I'm going to grab my highlighter, coming off to the side, and I'm going to identify that on the graph. Now how do we identify the vertical asymptotes? Vertical asymptotes exist whenever there is a variable in the denominator. So in the denominator here, I'm going to set each one of these quantities equal to 0. So x equals 0, well, it's already done. And I'm going to set x plus 4 equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract x to the opposite side. So I have two equations for vertical asymptotes. We don't want to just put the numerical value of 0 and negative 4. We actually want to write it as an equation, just like I did for the horizontal asymptote. So now I'm going to go to x equals 0 and x equals negative 4 grabbing my highlighter, and I'm going to identify those vertical asymptotes. As a reminder, our function will never cross over or never touch a vertical asymptote. It can, let me make sure my old eyes map that off correctly, one, two, three, four, okay. It can, in fact, cross over or touch a horizontal asymptote. Okay, what's next? Well, let's go ahead and identify if there is a y-intercept here, and we should have a y-intercept, but oh, I know already there's not going to be a y-intercept. And the reason why there's going to be no y-intercept is because I have a vertical asymptote, I have a vertical asymptote that coincide with the y-axis. So remember, y-intercepts would be a point on the y-axis, and I just reminded you that our function will never touch or cross a y, uh, sorry, will never touch or cross a vertical asymptote. So this has no vertical asymptote. Oop, meant to say, it. this has no y-intercept. I'm listening to students outside in the hallway and, uh, and not focusing enough. Now, if you forgot that fact or did not realize that, you can go ahead and plug in 0 for x's. You'd have 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. You'd have 4 over 0. We know 4 over 0 would, would not be able to create a real number. In fact, if you plugged in your calculator, it would say it would say error. We can see that, right? You can never have 0 on the bottom. So that would also give you a clue as to why we have no y-intercept. Now, is there an x-intercept? If there's any variable in the numerator, we're going to take this section and we're going to set it equal to 0. Now, we could also take this entire thing. I could do 2x plus 4 and set it equal to 0, but even easier is to take this x plus 2 set it equal to 0, move it to the opposite side, and I have negative 2. You'd get the same thing here if you move 4 to the opposite side and divide it by 2, you'd still end up with x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2. Now, how do we go about graphing the rest? Well, we just need to create additional points. So I'm going to take a little paper here. Prior to this, I'd used, um, I'd used a calculator to do some of those basic computations. And so we're going to do this now without. So I'm going to choose a number to the right. So I'm going to choose a 1. So when my input is 1, let's figure out what the output is. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. And 1 plus 4 is 5. Okay, well, 6 over 5 is just a little bit more than 1. It's just a little bit more than 1. So I know this is just slightly greater than 1. So I'm going to go over 1 and up just a little bit more than 1. 
And that already shares with me that I'm going to have part of the rational function is going to be in this region. Okay, now in the middle, how do I know if it comes down this way or if it slides down this way? Well, let's just choose a number. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose negative 1. All right, coming back up here. 2 times negative 1, sorry, much better for you there. Let's bring this over. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Negative 1 squared is 1, and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, so 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Okay, so when I plug in negative 1, I get an output of negative 2 thirds. So when I plug in negative 1, I get an output of negative 2 thirds. And that tells me that this graph is going to be going down to the right in this section and up to the left. Now I need to know, is it going to be above or below the x-axis? So I'm going to choose a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The first, I'm going to choose the first integer to the left of the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 4. So I'm going to choose negative 5, bringing this back up. I'm going to choose negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Okay, negative 5 squared is 25. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So I have negative 6 over 5. Okay, this is negative a little bit more than 1. So just a little bit less than negative 1. So negative 1.1, negative 1.2 is what my approximation would be. I'm going to go over negative 5 and a little bit lower than negative 1. Over negative 5, a little bit lower than negative 1. It tells me that this portion of the rational function occurs below the x-axis.